Good afternoon, evening or morning, New Zealand and the world. My name is Lucas Lawmans and this is Kiwi Voice. And today we are going to have give you an in-depth review of the recently released documentary Safe and Effective, A Second Opinion. Dropped on YouTube four days ago uh, and also on the creators Oracle Films own website. So I've watched the whole thing a couple of times, broken it down and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Safe and Effective. Now, part statistic and expert opinions-based documentary, part human interest story around some of the vaccine injured in the UK, Safe and Effective, a second opinion from Oracle Films, released four days ago on YouTube and Oracle Films' own website. It's a sobering, enlightening, and sometimes actually heartbreaking piece of filmmaking that sheds light on what was not that long ago, a heavily suppressed or censored subject but is slowly and surely finding its way into the mainstream conversation, although I believe still have some ways to go yet. Set against the backdrop of official UK government messaging, grandiose pharmaceutical company claims, and general public perception through street side interviews, etc., For the human part of the film, it focuses on a group of vaccine-injured individuals that range from a previously fit and healthy 20-something man that lost his ability to do the physical activity and competition at a high level that he loved, including ballroom dancing, through to a 57-year-old man that lost his leg, sadly due to severe blood clots from the AstraZeneca vaccine, a 35-year-old woman who suffered from extreme tremors and is a registered disabled now where she was previously not, a 32-year-old woman who lost her husband, a 50-year-old woman who runs a food business from home. There are many more, and I don't wish to discount any individual story in any way, so I would suggest that you, of course, watch the film yourself, which I assume, if you're watching this vid, you're going to or already have. With its primary, but not only, expert reference being Dr. Asim Malhota, consultant cardiologist who was pro-vaccine and at the front of the queue, he says in his own words, the film does its best to try and convey the scale of the issue with adverse reactions and deaths, jointly described as vaccine harm, using the UK's version of our CALM system, which they call the MHRA, and referencing the widely Reference USA system, VIAs. They reference these figures here. Their figures to August the 24th show over 430,000 reported reactions, of which 2,240 were fatal. America's VAERS system has almost one and a half million reports with over 30,000 deaths. Not all these reports will be confirmed as vaccine induced, but then again, not all reactions are reported. The figures surely demand investigation. Hearing these humans convey their stories of how the vaccine, often AstraZeneca, this was the far more widely used in the UK than we had it here, we only had a small section of our population that used it here, changed their lives for the worse is quite confronting. And at times, as I said previously, it's heartbreaking. I struggled somewhat hearing previously fit an able-bodied John Watt, 36 years old, describing his experience while conveying that he was ignored and even ridiculed by the UK health authorities. This, of course, could have been anyone. Such was the nature of the concerted push to have this into as many arms as possible. Around 17 minutes into the film, it touches on the Pfizer clinical trial data as well that they attempted to keep confidential for 75 years, an openly public piece of information that has never been scrutinised in New Zealand in any way. That is, that Pfizer actively tried to keep their trial data suppressed for 75 years. The film cites Alexandra Latyapova, who was part of a medical experts or group of medical experts who studied the documents and shows this information. The US court finally ordered their release and the initial disclosures are alarming. Alexandra Latipova is one of a group of experts who studied the documents. Among her shocking allegations are these. Pfizer skipped major categories of safety testing altogether. The toxicity of the COVID-19 vaccine's mRNA active ingredient was never studied. The FDA and Pfizer knew about major toxicities associated with gene therapy class of medicines. The CDC, FDA, and Pfizer lied about vaccine staying in the injection site. 
My examination of leaked Moderna documents also revealed that vaccine-induced antibody-enhanced disease was identified as a serious risk. That was, of course, after a US court ordered the documents release. Throughout the film, John Bow, presenter and creator, makes it clear that he has contacted the UK DHS, which is the Department of Health and Social Care, same of our Ministry of Health, I would say, for comment on various points within the film. At around half a dozen times, at various points, seeking their comment, we advised that they are responded with, this is not something that the DHSC will be responding to. It touches on regulatory capture, citing the percentage of funding to the MHRA, and which comes from the pharmaceutical industry, which he cites, or the film cites, at 86%. Then moving on to informed consent, Dr. Ros Jones, in the film, a retired paediatrician, makes the case that doctors were just too busy and blindly trusted the information they were provided. Basically, the government guidelines and mainstream media reports. There's a couple of astonishing statements from her from what she's seen out in the field. This I can understand in the modern world for sure, and that the persistence of government and government department propaganda has disrupted the patient-doctor relationship. Well-made documentary making includes ensuring every available effort is made to hear both sides of the story, and the makers do clearly state that millions of people took this vaccine without any side effects at all, which is absolutely true. We of course all know that. In fact, I would go one further, even in this review only, to state that it is the large majority, for sure. But here it moves on to John Watt's story, whom I mentioned previously. His story is brutal. I can't truly put it into words. So, let's hear it from his own mouth. Before I was fat and healthy, and used to do boxing, uh, would do crossfit, you know, do a lot of weights, weight training and, you know, keep myself in good shape. When I had my Pfizer booster, that's when my world just totally crumbled. I remember one time grabbing on to the side door, you know, I'm going to die. I couldn't even get to the toilet. They was so frightened. His body was shaking, it was jerk. It was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. My heart got elevated when I was on standing. I got really sick. I was um, being sick for six weeks. I was retching and being sick and throwing up every single day. My heart cramped. It felt like somebody had grabbed my heart and twisted it three times. I had brain fog. I developed a slur. I'd, I would slur my words and... I developed a stammer, I had seizures. I can't, my body can't regulate temperature anymore. Um, it's totally ruined my life. <laughs> my life, this is my life now. Stuck in my bed every day. With no help from anybody. not a life form, it's an existence. As we head into the last quarter of the doco, we cover off some more statistical analysis of actual risk from COVID and deaths pre and post vaccination. I won't ruin the doco for you if you are yet to view it, but for many people, these figures will be well known. For others, it could well be a surprise for you. It then touches on the phenomenon of super fit athlete sports stars, primarily in soccer and football, collapsing and dying on the pitch before going over some of the newly emerging excess death statistics. Based on current rates of excess deaths being presented, John Bow states that the UK is on track to record 75,000 excess deaths in 2022 alone. This sort of data has been floating around for some time now on alternative media throughout the internet, but it is very rarely discussed on mainstream media, and it is a little bit of a shame to me that this doco doesn't go into it in much detail here. The last section of the doco covers the incredibly biased mainstream media coverage throughout COVID uh, and the lockdowns, going to some detail 
around the psychological tactics used by the mass media, government-sponsored uh, messaging as well, to have the mass of the public comply. I know there are plenty of people out there that strongly refute the claim that this was a preconceived, coordinated effort, but equally as many that understand and actively resisted the perceived attempts at influencing public opinion. I was pleased to see this covered in the film, again, again, albeit briefly. It does somewhat feel from a filmmaking perspective that this last quarter acknowledges all of these elements as important. However, they are of such detail that they could easily have been a lengthy investigative documentary all of its own. So in some ways, it shortens things. At 49 minutes in, it briefly covers the protest movement in the UK, centering, on, of course, on London. This hit particularly hard for me. Also, personally, as I've spoken about so many times on Kiwi Voice and various uh, videos, etc., the protest movement provided me a safe and accepting place in a deeply dark and confronting time, and I will forever be thankful for those uh, for those people. There was a lot of build-up to this documentary throughout the internet, and subsequently a lot of public anticipation in certain circles. And although not at all perfect, I think at times too brief, as mentioned, where it truly shines is the human stories it conveys of the vaccine injured in the UK, giving a voice to those who felt completely ignored and ridiculed, and perhaps providing further understanding to those out there that are yet to get a handle on, or to have this point completely ignored, that the widespread nature of harm that this one-size-fits-all approach has caused. And being UK-based, it provides more perspective outside of New Zealand. Overall, I would say it's a recommended watch for anyone, a one and one of a long list of these types of video documents, films, that are still to come in the coming months and years. We know of many, many out there that are being worked on, that have been worked on for some time, that are due to be released and I, for one, am pleased to see the opposing narrative continue to be presented uh, in a professional, uh, statistical, truth and facts-based manner. So I'm looking forward to more of this information coming forward. Side note, uh, for those in the UK, they do have a government compensation scheme for the vaccine injured, and a number of the people profiled in this documentary did receive it. It was capped at 120,000 UK pounds. New Zealand has ACC uh, as the setup for us, uh, but the understanding is that it is nothing of the acknowledgement that they're getting over there. But correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. That was my review of Safe and Effective, a second opinion by Oracle Films. Absolutely worth a watch. Won't tell you any more. Definitely go and check it out for yourselves. Thanks everyone that's taken the time to tune in. Get amongst the conversation below. Share these links around to anyone or anywhere that you think may benefit from it. But for now team, stay safe, stay free. We'll see you again real soon.